Many of you have asked for it, and it's been a long time coming. Sorry about that. The step-by-step -step guide on how to transform your regular old PS Move controller into a lightweight and ergonomic hip tracker for full body tracking in VR is finally here. I won't keep you waiting, so let's get things going. First, I'll give you a quick overview of what your controller will be turned into and how it'll work once it's transformed. This here is your regular PS Move controller with no modifications. And here is the final modified hip tracker. It's much smaller as you can tell, and the LED bulb has been made to point straight out from your body so it's less prone to occlusion. On this version, we slimmed down the button selection to just the ones we need, those being the pairing button down here on the bottom, and the select button on the side for recentering the controller. Overall, there are just four parts you'll need to 3D print, which assemble into two working pieces. The main body here that houses the controller, and the quick disconnect rail that gets screwed onto the track strap. This is so you can just slide it on and off whenever you need to, so you don't have to deal with fully detaching it every time. But before we start, a quick disclaimer or warning. First, you'll need a 3D printer to do this so you can even make the parts, and unless you're absolutely comfortable with possibly permanently modifying your controller, you might not want to do this. This modification doesn't just magically improve tracking. I'm saving that modification for another video where I can fully compare the before and after. This is just for the people who want to do it. The second thing is, is that there are actually two different PCB shapes for the PS3 Move controller on top of the third PS4 version. That means the design I've provided is only compatible with this particular version of the PS3 Move controller. The other PS3 version and the PS4 version will not fit inside it. Unfortunately, I don't have designs that fit every single kind of PCB that I know of. For this reason though, I've made the original F3D CAD files available so you yourself can modify them to fit. Now that that's all out of the way, and you're still here, grab those 3D files from the GitHub page linked in the description, print those pieces off, and let's get straight into this modification. First thing you'll need is a skinny Phillips head screwdriver that has enough length to actually get down into the controller. The next thing you're going to want are some wire snips or a soldering iron so we can get rid of some of the excess components. Either will work for that job, but the soldering iron will be a little less permanent if you plan on selling the controllers on afterwards. So. Our first step is going to be getting the PS Move controller and removing the first four screws from the back. This will separate the main body down the middle. Now that you've got it open, you can take the bulb assembly and slide the LED out of it and set it aside. Make sure you keep every single screw you take out of this thing safe as well, because we're going to reuse them later to actually assemble the 3D printed case. Now the next thing you're going to want to do is, if there is one, remove the ribbon cable that connects the trigger assembly to the PCB. There are other PCB revisions of the PS3 Move controller, and they may use push pins to make this connection, so don't worry if there isn't one. The one thing you shouldn't do though is try to remove the LED's ribbon cable, because it's really fragile and soldered directly to the board too, so try not to bend it back and forth too much, otherwise it will snap off. I know this from experience. Now with that all said, the next step will be to actually remove the rest of the old casing, and so there are a few screws left holding the PCB into it. Two of them here at the top of the PCB, one of them down here at the bottom next to the rumble motor, and then one sneaky one here hiding under the battery, so you'll have to take it out to get at it. Now you should be able to pull the rest of the casing off of the controller, save for the bottom bit here which might still be held in by a couple of other screws. Also keep these little silicon bits here for later, because we will be needing them. Now that everything's out of the way, it would be a great idea to actually disconnect the battery from the board now. Be gentle as you pull it out because the connector can be quite fragile, and then slide the rumble motor out of its mount here as well. Now the last few things we have to remove here by hand are the plastic frames from the board. The first one here will be the part that was holding the battery, and if you flip the board over, you should see here two plastic tabs that you can just unhook so you can carefully remove the part while minding the LED's ribbon cable that's hooked around it. Now the next bit we're going to be interested in is going to be down here at the bottom sandwiched between these two boards. First, undo the two hooks on the top board and then flip it out of the way, and then move on to the other side and undo the other two hooks, and then just slide out the piece of plastic from in between them. This process may vary with the differing board designs, but if you get your controller into this state with just the bare board and the few things hanging off of it, you're ready for the next step. Because this is the point where we actually remove all of the extra things that we don't need off of the board. Those being the vibration motor, first and foremost, the whole door board with the useless second connector, and the pads that charge the controller when it's in a PS Move dock. So basically, everything that's on the bottom of the board that has a wire on it. After doing that, what you should be left with is something that looks like this. The bare PCB of the PS Move controller with just its LED hanging off the board. 
just ignore the swap to this battle scab prototyping you with a totally different design. The assembly process is going to be completely the same, you're just going to be using your respective hip controller design for the PCB version you have. So what you should have on hand now is all of the 3D prints that you're going to use in the final assembly. Those being the bottom and top halves of the main body, the pairing button that goes inside of that, and the two washers that'll help hold the PCB in place. With all of those on hand, the first thing to do is actually test fit the board into the bottom half of the custom case and check if the built-in select switch is the right length to actuate the button when pressed. If it's too long, it will hold it down all the time, and I made it purposefully long so you can trim it down to the perfect length for you. So do that, and carefully, because the buttons can be fragile. Next, grab the pairing button, then put it in the hole in the centre of the bottom half. Then, grab the silicon membrane from the pairing button on the old PS Move casing and place it down this face up on top of the button inside. Once you're done with that, you can start fitting everything else inside. The first thing to go in is obviously the PCB of the PS Move controller itself. To secure it in, what you're going to want to do is grab two of the screws from the old PS Move controller, put the 3D printed washers on them, and use them to secure the PCB into the case by threading them through the holes in the middle like so. Make sure to give the new pairing button a quick press to check if you can feel the button underneath it actuating. Just open it back up and reseat it if you don't. Next, plug in the battery, place it into its compartment with the more egg-shaped point pointing down and outwards, and route the cable through the channel to make sure it doesn't get pinched when you screw on the top later. Next, grab the top half of the custom case, then grab the bulb from the old neck of the PS Move controller, take it out of there, and push it through the hole in the new lid, and it should lock in place just like it were on the original controller. Next, what you're going to want to do is carefully grab the LED assembly of the controller and slide it up into the channels on the top half so it goes into the bulb in the same way it was on the old controller. Then, what you're going to want to do is make sure it's butted up all the way to the top so you can grab two more screws from the old controller and screw them into the channels on the neck of the top half to hold the LED assembly in place on the inside. Be mindful when doing this, because there's a reason why this controller doesn't have a ribbon cable for its LED anymore. Anyway, all you have to do now is get the top and bottom halves, put them together, and use the rest of the leftover screws to close it up. Physically, everything is here and all put together. Just screw the mounting rail onto your track strap. All we have to do now is a quick recalibration in the PS Move service for the controller to get used to its new form. Though with this new look comes a few minor changes to the calibration process. All you're going to do is pair your controller to your PC using the new pairing button on the bottom here, then recalibrate the magnetometer and gyroscope like usual. Just note now that what used to be the top of the controller is now technically the bottom, so when calibrating to the forward direction, just point the bulb in that way and you should be on track. Also, when recentering the controller using the select button, the bulb should be facing downwards as a result. That should be everything you need to do for now, and you should be 100% ready to hop into VR with your new and improved hip tracker. But if you ever need to recalibrate your play space with the calibration mat, you'll need to make a few small accommodations for the hip tracker again. First, just make sure the controller's bulb sits around the same height as a normal controller when placed on the mat. Just take a few random objects under it to do that. Then, when you place it down on the point, you'll notice the software won't be able to tell it's set down properly automatically, so just hit trust me it's stable, and that should force the step to complete. You can then just go on with the calibration like normal, and everything should be golden. That's all for this guide, but before you go, make sure to follow me on Twitter for some behind the scenes updates, and tweet some pictures of your PS Move setups at me. I'd absolutely love to see what people have come up with after following my tutorial. With that said though, remember to like, comment, and most of all subscribe, so you don't miss out on any of my future VR experiments. Thanks for watching, my name's Kai, and I'll see you soon. Bye bye.